but this evening you're in for such a real treat. This is uh, the Richard Johnson Quartet. Richard was here, uh, I want to say April, maybe March, and um, uh, I he actually heard about him through WDCB. And Richard came and did an evening, uh, and he, and he uh, specifically did the music from West Side Story, and it was it just brought the house down. It was so spectacular. It was such a spectacular evening. And in the conversation afterwards, he was telling me about this other project that he's got going where he travels around doing the music of Dave Brubeck's Time Out album, which is one of my favorite albums ever. And so I said, well, let's do that. <laughs> so it was like, as soon as the day, the day after he was here, I was trying to get him to, like, when can we get a date for that? So this is that night I've been waiting for it for months. And uh, so we will have. Richard D. Johnson on piano. This is his wife, Cheryl Cassidy, on saxophone, and she's extraordinary. Um, and the great Charles Heath on drums and Dennis Carroll on bass, all uh, world-class musicians, and we'll get to talk to them later. But for now, I'm leaving a stage to go listen with you. Thanks very much. How's everybody doing? Oh, look, now look. I was here before, and I like to tell everybody, I need audience participation. All right, so how's everybody doing? All right, that's a lot better. We feed off you guys, so we play some, you inspire some. If you hear something you like, say, play on, player. You know, we love that. You throw a cookie or something at me. We may play a couple more courses, but, um. Get into it, you know, this is jazz music, you know. We love you, you love us, we all love each other, and then we get a drink. Thank you. 
Give it up to lovely Miss Sherelle Cassidy, saxophone. Bass, Dennis Carroll. Drums, give it up, diggity dog, Charles Heath. Anybody know the name of that song? All right, just checking. If not, we need to go practice. <laughs> if you haven't heard, that's probably the most popular jazz tune ever. <laughs> you can hear it in your car, you can hear it on the radio station, you can hear it in the mall, you can hear it in elevators, you hear it in hotels, just about everywhere. Little kids here don't even know what it is. So it's all around you, that's jazz for you. So before that, we did a song entitled Strange Metal Lark. That's a beautiful ballad Dave wrote. And he wrote that um, after a bird, when he used to practice, a bird would come to his windowsill. And he would often see this bird. And then he said he started singing this little melody. Doo, 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 Cause you know, birds can sing pitches too, not just people. Um, so he took it from there and expanded on it. Now we have a beautiful tune entitled Strange Metal Lark. And prior to that, we did one of the most difficult songs ever, <laughs> entitled Blue Runda, Alatark. That's right, and that has its own story. He was overseas, and he was in Turkey, and he was visiting some people doing some gigs, and he kept hearing this rhythm. And he started asking everyone, what is this rhythm? And it was their national rhythm, which was a strange time signature here in the United States. Um, but he dug it, so when he came home, he wrote a song about it, and his younger son was over there with him. And he's still alive with us. If you want to check the story, send him an email. <laughs> he will find you and ask why you need to know. <laughs> That's right. So that was entitled Blue Runda. So hopefully you guys, have you guys heard this music before? Yeah. Oh, okay, good, good, good. All right, so you know, forgive us if we make a mistake here and there because we know you guys are jazz police. Like, oh, all right, he missed that one. Ooh, check. But we're going to keep playing because we love this music so much. Right now, we're going to go into the next song. This is entitled Three to Get Ready. And this is actually one of the most difficult songs to me because it goes back and forth between two times signatures. Three, four, four, four. That probably means absolutely nothing to most of you guys. But to us, it means a whole lot because if we get lost, that's the end of us.
All right. Well, you know, when this album was recorded in 59, recordings were short. They weren't that long. I think the whole recording was maybe 40 minutes, if that. So we took the liberties to solo and play on it. Hopefully, did you guys enjoy that? Great. Well, this is the last song, and this song is really a vamp, which is features our bass player and drummer. And these guys have just been magnificent. I've had the chance to play with them all year doing this and doing West Side Story, and it's always a pleasure to play with them. You know, I'm not the easiest guy to play behind, but they keep up and they keep pushing me. So give it up on drums, Mr. Charles Heath. On bass, Mr. Dennis Carroll. And on saxophone, you have the lovely Miss Sherelle Cassidy. So we're gonna close out with this short little song. Hopefully you enjoy it. It ends with the drum, so don't get nervous and think something's wrong. I know you guys wanna have a libation or four or five of them. And um, I have CDs for sale. You can uh, see me or go to the bar. I'll take some over there. But it's always a pleasure to have people come listen to jazz. You know, this establishment has been great to me, been great to all of us, and great to Chicago. Give it up for this venue. That's right. So we're going to play this Pickup Sticks. It features the drums. And hopefully you enjoy it. And thank you very much. My name's Richard Johnson. We have another set. We're going to play some originals. I had a chance to record a uh, CD a couple weeks ago and uh, did some music with Sherelle's and we're going to play some of those originals so you get to hear a little bit of those. So stick around if you can and make sure everything you do is swinging. That's the Richard Johnson Quartet. Richard Johnson, Sherelle Cassidy, Dennis Carroll, and Charles Heath. How about that? Thank you so much. Please do stick around. Another set, and the bar is now open. Over here. And I will, just as a quick little background, um, Richard was here, I can't remember if it was March or April, something like that. April, April 5th? Do you have one of those memories? Actually, I need you to talk to <laughs> One of those memories. <laughs> it's okay. I'm not I mean, did, I'm, seriously, but seriously, did you, did you have to think about that, or did you just know it was April 5th? I don't remember dates people hired me. 
Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, on April 5th, we had this, uh, Richard came in, and with his trio, with the same two, same, uh, Dennis Carroll and Charles Heath, and they played music from West Side Story, and it was so spectacular. And that night, as we were packing up, he told me about the, this, uh, this expanded thing he does with Shirelle, doing uh, the music from, uh, from uh, Dave Brubeck's Time Out. And I was so excited to hear what that would be, given how much uh, fun we had the first night. So I'm thrilled to have you both here. Um, and I just wanted to ask a little bit of the two of you about the genesis of this project. I mean, what, what drove you to this particular album and this particular composer, Dave Brubeck? And by the way, uh, our friend Jeff Balch, who was in the audience, I spotted him somewhere. He reminded me that this whole album was recorded 60 years ago this month. Wow. So yeah, well, groovy, baby. <laughs> 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 well, for me, um, you know, I had a chance to meet Dave in 97. We did an ABC TV special. And uh, how I met him, it was a super all-star cast of musicians. Uh, Wynton Marcellus, Arturo Sandoval, Roy Hargrove, Terrence Blanchard. It was like 30 oh, unbelievable wow. guys. So they're doing sound check backstage. They have refreshments. And I'm a big fan of soft chocolate chip cookies. Okay. Um, and I was reaching for a cookie, and there was this guy next to me reaching for a cookie. And I looked up, and I said, I know this guy, but I don't <laughs> know where from. And then it clicked, this is the dude. <laughs> you know, was, wow. I, was think, I think I was like 21 or something. Wow. And uh, I was like, hey, uh, Mr. Brubeck, and he's eating his cookie. <laughs> I'm like, oh, it's a pleasure to meet you. So we talked for a little bit. It wasn't too long. Um, but were, you, uh, were you playing with Winton at the time? No, no. I was in the Thelonious Monk Institute, now called the Herbie Hancock Institute. Um, uh -huh. So that's why we were there. Herbie was there, Ron Carter. And, um, yeah, we talked for a little bit, and at the end of that, you know, he told me, he said, whatever you do, just keep on swinging. <laughs> yeah, so that was the last thing he, he got to say to me, and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> 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 wow. Kind of walked away. Wow. So, um, yeah, I've always been hearing about this recording, and I never really checked it out. And I said, let me sit down and actually really listen to it and see what it is to play and learn it. I said, it's about time. So that's why I started to play it. <laughs> yeah, well, it really, you know, I was thinking about that era, about how during that kind of late 50s, early 60s, it was, there was so much stuff that was, I mean, there's certain classical influences in what he did with the mixed meters and you know, it became kind of more intellectual you know, in the writing. And I was thinking about Gunther Schuller had all that third stream stuff going. There was um, the Modern Jazz Quartet was doing their thing. And there was uh, Chico Hamilton who had all that, like, chamber jazz stuff going. So there were, like, all these jazz musicians who were experimenting with, like, like putting things, I importing other things into jazz. I mean, I think that's kind of how jazz always has been. But Well, yeah, I mean, to me, when you're playing this music, especially at that period, those guys were playing every single day, yeah. sometimes playing five sets a day. After you've played any tune for two years, five times a night, you're going to start to experiment. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know, right. it's like being a chef or a cook, you know. It was like, what else can I put into this? What can I, can I make it different? You know, I had the opportunity uh, last week to record with Sherelle doing her album. And she did a lot of songs that were in different time signatures. You know, so I think a lot of that comes from experimenting, like what can I do with this? What can I add to it? You know, so you learn a lot from that and you keep what works and what doesn't work, you hope they didn't record. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> well, Cheryl, I want to ask you, there's, you know, there's something about your tone. Uh, I, I, we just met, I mean, like several hours ago. So uh, this is all brand new to me and I am, I'm just digging everything I'm hearing. And your sound on the alto sounds, it sounds, like it's very individual and yet there seems to be real respect for Paul Desmond and, and his sound and that kind of airy, light, breathy, not, not breathy, but, but, but there's something just kind of light as air about, about his, his tone. Mm -hmm. And you seem to, I don't know what you're going to sound like on anything else, but <laughs> it's certainly there. It certainly feels like you're really, there's a lot of respect there. Can you just talk about, th about this music and Paul Desmond and how you feel about it? Oh, yeah. Well, first, thank you. You know, for the comments about my sound with the Paul Desmond, um, I can tap into it because I started as a classical musician. Ah. 
And I started playing the alto at nine, and my father would play me recordings of Paul Desmond and you know all of all of these songs. So actually, when I was ten, he wrote out "Blue Rondo a la Turk" for me, and oh that, wow. that was yeah. So your dad was a musician. He was, uh -huh. and um, and at the same time, you know, I was listening to Charlie Parker and John Coltrane. But uh, this, I, I really like Paul Desmond, you know, too. He's got a special place in the music. Yeah, yeah. Well, he certainly had a unique tone, and 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 the alto was perfectly suited to him, or he was suited to the alto. I don't know what, but but there was a, a, a real. It, it, it he has one of those very individual sounds that you really pretty much know in a couple notes. Oh, that's mm -hmm. that's Desmond. Um, and you, but you came up th academically. You went to Juilliard and. Am I am I correct? Correct. So and then and now you're involved in lots of different groups. So can you talk just a little bit about some of the other things that you've been involved with or are involved with? Yes. Well, mainly um, lately I've been playing with the Dizzy Gillespie All Stars the past ten years. Um, the Dizzy Gillespie Latin small group as well, um, but mostly trying to really play with my own group, my own band, which mm -hmm. is what we just recorded. Um, it'll be my fourth album. Wow. And. Uh, you know, so I've I've had a great time just composing and, and working on that. Got it. And you guys are based here in Chicago now. We are. But uh, the, the Dizzy Gillespie group, I assume, is not, not here. No, no. So I do a bit of traveling. Uh -huh. um, and actually, the first time I played this Brubeck music was when I played with Cyrus Chestnut's Brubeck Quartet. Oh, wow. So we we played a lot of this music a few years ago. So when Richard approached me about playing this music, it was a really good fit. Yeah, I suppose. Well, it sure, certainly sounds like it. Um, and uh, and what a joy to have you both here! I mean, truly, truly, it really is, really is a delight. Um, I I could stay in chat all night, but I would really rather hear music rather than hear me talk. <laughs> so I'm going to leave the stage <laughs> and just uh, thank for for everybody here. I'd like to just say thanks to you both and uh, these other two fine missing oh gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> Richard D. Johnson, Cheryl Cassidy, and that's Dennis Carroll and Charles Heath. We're going to play a song, a duo song entitled Holy Hands. A uh, mentor of mine was Marvie Miller. He was a good friend of mine. And um, this was one of his tunes. And um, I like it a lot, so we're going to play it.
Thank you. That was an original entitled Far Away at Heart. Um, and I grew up playing tunes like that. My dad plays organ and piano. And uh, he showed me how to play. And he still plays. He actually played on the recording we did. He played B3 organ. And um, we grew up playing songs like that in church. So I wanted to bring that to the people. So hopefully you enjoyed that soulfulness. The song before that was another original entitled First Glance, and I wrote that, I think I was 19, and um, I hadn't played it in a long time, and I was cleaning out my library, and I found it. I said, this actually sounds okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I decided to record it and play it, and I want people to drive on a Sunday in the country and just feel the swing when they hear that one. So this next one is nothing like either one of those. <laughs> It's entitled Last Minute, and I wrote this. It's kind of a answer to Margu Miller's um, song. He has one called um, The Eleventh Hour, and this is the last minute of The Eleventh Hour. <laughs> so I'll let you guys figure this one out.
Society. Well, this brings us to the close of the evening. Did you enjoy yourself tonight? All right, give it up for Mr. Dave Brubeck. I'd like to thank all of you for coming out and spending this wonderful evening. It's so beautiful outside and it's beautiful inside too. Give it up for Sherelle Cassidy on the saxophones. On the drums, Mr. Charles Diggity Dog Heath. And on the bass, Mr. Dennis Carroll. My name is Richard Johnson, RJ Jazz. I have some CDs over there. Um, I'd like to thank all you guys for checking us out and appreciating the music. We need more supporters like you to let us keep going. I'd also like to thank the wonderful lady who brought me chocolate chip cookies. That's right. She was at a gig I did a few months ago and I always let the people know I love soft chocolate chip cookies and banana bread with no nuts. So um, you can check out my site, see where I'm going to be at. I'm going to be around town. I'm going to be out of town. I'm going to be on Mars. I'm going to be everywhere playing this music. So once again, I'd like to thank the venue for having us. It's always great to be back here. And I've always got another project up my sleeve. Hint, hint. <laughs> so thank you very much. And we're going to end with this blues. Have a drink. Go home. Enjoy the music. Thank you. I love my cookies. I love my cookies. Oh, is this on? Oh, there we go. Make sure we're here. I love my cookies. I like to eat them all the time. When I get my cookies, I like to make a beautiful rhyme. I like sweet chocolate chip cookies in my stomach. I eat them every day. I like my sweet chocolate chip cookies in my stomach. I eat them a hundred ways. I got to have sweet chocolate chip cookies today. Sweet, 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 sweet. I like sweet, sweet, sweet. Say that with me. I like sweet, 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 sweet. I like sweet, sweet, sweet. Oh yeah, I like sweet, sweet. Sweet, sweet, I like sweet, 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 oh yeah, I like my sweet, 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 I like my sweet, 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 I like my sweet, 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 I like my sweet, 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 I like them sweet, 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 I like them sweet, 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 I thank you for bringing the cookies. I'll be here next week. I like to thank you for the cookies. You're on a winning streak. If you don't find me here, I give you my email address so you can come to my house and bring all the cookies you can find in the world. I like it sweet, 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 sweet. I like it sweet, sweet, sweet. Come on, everybody. I like it sweet, 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 sweet. I like it sweet, sweet, sweet. Oh, yeah. I like it sweet. Sweet, 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 I like a sweet, 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 oh yeah, I like a sweet, 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 I like a sweet, 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 oh yeah, I like a sweet, 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 I like a sweet, 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 oh yeah, I like a sweet, 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 I like a sweet. Thank you, thank you very much. Richard D. Johnson, Sherelle Cassidy, Charles Heath, Dennis Carroll. And aren't we all lucky to be here? Thank you, folks.